Hi, this is Ms. Fitzmaurice, and this video is an explanation of the free response problem on page 12 of your Unit 8 packet. This is also the 1993 M3 problem. Okay, so in this problem, we have a long uniform, and uniform just means the mass is evenly distributed, rod. And this rod or stick, whatever you want to call it, is attached by a thread to a ceiling, and then at the other end, it's attached by a horizontal axis. So imagine a pole coming out of the page and into the page, and the stick is kind of attached to that. Um, in part A, it just wants us to find the magnitude and direction of the force exerted by the rod, on the rod, by the axis. Okay, so for part A, <coughs> we need to draw a torque body diagram or a force body diagram to find the force on the rod. Um, because this thing is not moving, we know that we have all three conditions for rotational equilibrium, sigma fx equals zero, sigma fy equals zero, and also sigma tau, the total torque, is equal to zero. So I'm going to draw both a force body diagram and a torque diagram. And it turns out for this case, I only need the force body diagram, but I'll, I'll draw the torque body diagram as well because I'm going to need that later. Okay, so the forces acting are this tension from the string. Um, we have uh, mg from the middle of the rod. And then we have the force from the axis. Okay, because tension is straight up and mg is straight down. Okay, and I'm going to draw these on my force body diagram. So I have tension and I have mg. That tells me that FA also has to be straight up because there's no X force. Or there's no other X force. So if FA had an X component, something else would have to cancel it out. Um, so I want to find the size of this FA. And I misspoke earlier. I said we needed only a force body diagram. We only need a torque body diagram. And so I'm going to use this picture right here. I know that I want to find FA, and I don't know T, um, but I can do away with it by picking the axis of rotation for my torque to be at this end where T is. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to think about whether, if this is my axis point, um, whether my torques are going to be positive or negative. Um, FA, if I only had that force, would make my stick turn around in this direction. Okay, so that's a negative torque, or sorry, a positive torque. And MG would make it turn around in this direction, so that's a positive torque. Okay, one more time. This guy is negative, this guy is positive. Okay, this is clockwise, this is counterclockwise. Okay, so now I'm going to use sigma tau equals zero. So I have tau A, which I know is negative, plus tau for gravity, I'm going to call it tau G, um, plus tau from the tension equals zero. But since, in general, torque is equal to F R sine theta, and the distance from my tension force to my pivot point is zero, my torque for tension is zero. Okay. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and fill in my equation for torque. So I have minus FA RA 
sine theta a, okay, plus fg rg sine theta g equals zero. I know that both of my forces are at 90 degree angles, okay, and so sine of 90 is 1, so I'm going to get rid of my sines. FA I don't know, so I leave that as it is, minus FA. RA is the distance between my pivot point and FA, so that's L, the length of my rod, so I have L. Um, plus mg and the average of where the mass is is in the middle so the distance to that from my pivot point is L over 2 so I have mg L over 2 equals 0. Now I can solve for F I notice that I can cancel out my L's because they're in each term and if I solve for F algebraically I get F equals m g over 2. Alright, so in part b it says now we're going to burn the thread. So the thread is going to go away. And what that does is it takes away my tension force and it takes away my tension force here. And I want to know, first of all, the angular acceleration of the rod about the axis. Okay, so I'm going to draw a new picture where I have no thread, and the only force now uh, is mg, and I still have this hinge or axis force Fa. And I want to know the angular acceleration around um, the rod. I know that in general, sigma tau equals I alpha. So I'm removing the fact that there was this ghost tension force. Okay, so this tension force is no more. And I can use the remaining forces to find tau. And the problem tells me that the moment of inertia around the axis, so around right here, is ml squared over 3. And so I can find, if I can find the net torque, I can solve for alpha. Okay, I want to know the acceleration around this axis. Okay, so that has to be my pivot point that I use to, ca to calculate my torques. Okay, so Looking at this, the distance from FA to my new pivot point, or RA, is zero. And the distance from my new pivot point to MG, I'm going to call it RG, is now equal to L over 2, which is actually what it was before. So my total torque, um, MG will be now a negative torque, because we're choosing a different pivot point. Um, because RA is zero, the torque from FA will be zero. So our total torque will just be minus the torque from gravity, which will be minus FG, RG, and notice this is a 90 degree angle, so sine 90, which is one m l squared over 3 alpha. Okay, I'm going to plug in minus mg and l over 2 equals m, and these are the same m's, m l squared over 3 alpha. My l's cancel, well one of my l's cancels, my m's cancel, okay, and I can cross multiply the 3, so I get alpha is equal to 3g over 2l. Okay, so that's my answer to b. 
In part C, now I want the translational acceleration of the center of mass of the rod. Okay, so the center of mass of the rod is right here at the center. Okay, and if something is turning, what I told you is that acceleration is equal to r times alpha. And so our acceleration will be r, the distance from our axis, which we found out before is L over 2, times alpha, which we found out in B, is 3g over 2l. Now our l's cancel, and we get our acceleration is equal to 3g divided by 4. All right, so in part D, we want to know the force exerted on the end of the rod by the axis. And in part C, we figured out that our acceleration, and if you think about it, the acceleration of the mass, okay, the instant you let go of it will be straight down. Okay, this is like tangent to the circle. And our acceleration is 3g over 4. So what that means is that if we draw a force body diagram, we can use f of the axis mg down. And we can use sigma fy equals m a y and for a y we're going to put negative 3g over 4 because we know the acceleration is downwards so I have f a up minus m g down is equal to m or minus m 3g over 4 okay um, I can add mg to both sides, and when I do that, I get fa is equal to mg over 4. All right, finally in part e, it says determine the angular velocity of the rod as a function of theta, the arbitrary angle. So it's going to swing down a certain amount by some angle theta. And we want to know <clears throat> the angular velocity as a function of that theta. Um, so this isn't going to be a problem in which there's constant acceleration or constant angular acceleration because the direction of the forces are changing all this time. What that means is we're probably going to have to use conservation of energy. So we're going to use sigma e naught equals sigma e. Okay. At the beginning, we have ug. And at the end, we have kinetic energy. But remember that it's rotational kinetic energy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw this just so it's easier to see the angle. And to find ug, I don't need the total height. I need the height that the center of mass has traveled. Okay, so it was at this height, and then it traveled down to here. And so we have to set up a little... So we could do a problem to figure out how high that's going to be. So what's this green height that I'm drawing right here? Okay. <clears throat> so we know the center of mass is at halfway through the rod. So we know this line right here that I'm highlighting in blue is going to be equal to L over 2. Okay. 
So our height will be equal to L over 2 sine of our angle. Okay, so I'm going to put that in at the beginning. I know M G H can be replaced by M G L over 2 sine theta. Okay. Now this all turns into rotational kinetic energy, and I know that rotational kinetic energy is one-half I omega squared. I know that our I is L squared, or M L squared over 3, so I have M L squared over 3 omega. Now I look at my expression, I can see that I can cancel these twos, I can cancel my M's, and I can cancel one of the L's, and this should still be omega squared. Okay, all that I have left on this side is my 3 and my L. So I'm going to rewrite this, I have omega squared is equal to, I bring 3 up to the top, and L to the bottom, and then I have G and sine theta. So I have 3g sine theta over L is equal to omega squared. And then to get omega, I take the square root of both sides. And I have the square root of 3g sine theta divided by L. Okay, so I have a couple of closing questions that I want to ask you in order to get you to start thinking about when to use certain techniques. Okay, my first question is how do you figure out when or where Sorry, I should say where to put your pivot point when you're calculating torque. Um, also, how can you tell when to use um, torque or forces versus kinetic energy and conservation of energy. And finally, how can you figure out when to use torque versus when to use force?